how's it going? I'm Anna Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay. Um, so what am I going to talk about this week? Um, well, the annoying thing is, is that I have actually already recorded this one. <laughs> I did. And then my camera decided that it wasn't going to save it. Um, so now I'm going to have to sort of get back in that frame of mind that I was in when I recorded it the first time. Um, and I'm in a, a little bit more of a tired state than I was when I recorded it the first time because I could not for the life of me get my camera to work again yesterday uh, when I actually recorded it the first time. <laughs> Which is really kind of annoying. I mean, um, I, I'll, I'll admit, I'm just using the webcam on my laptop. Um, I've tried, I, I did have a camera that I was using to begin with, but the sound quality on it wasn't very good. Um, I know the picture quality on this one isn't always great. It's not loving the light at the moment. Um, I am recording this after work. So this is just going to gradually get darker as, as we do this. Um, but if I don't record it now, then it, it might not happen uh, until Wednesday, which is the, the next day off that I have. And then I'm having to record it and edit it on the same t on the same day. And that's a whole bunch of stress I don't really want or need. So <laughs> I'm using the fact that I managed to finish work on time um, and I'm home and it's still reasonably light out. So I can use natural light for this because I prefer using natural light for this than um, having actual house lights on. Just because it, it, I don't know, there's something about how I vlog which just always feels so much better to do during the day um, than, than doing it sort of up an evening. And I think, you know, some of that comes down to my energy level. I don't have as much energy of an evening as I do during the day and I don't have a lot of energy during the day as is. <laughs> that says a lot really, doesn't it? Um, I know, I just first sort of doing this during daylight, uh, then I don't have to worry about putting house lights on and getting the lighting right and like getting the angles right. I know what I'm doing with the, with the natural light, so it makes sense for those kind of reasons um, as well. Um, so <laughs> what did I actually record a vlog about yesterday? Um, well, the fact that I'm kind of turning into a workaholic. Um, so, like, the whole gist of what I was going on about yesterday is that I'm in a good place uh, with my day job at the moment. Um, and I was <laughs> very much bringing some of that stuff home with me to finish off, not because I had to, but because I, I was just in such that, I'm just in such that frame of mind. Where I'm like, oh, if I don't do it now, if I don't get it done now, then it's not going to happen. I'm like, you know, I need to keep on top of this stuff and, and stuff like that. So on, on my day job front, I was telling me to such a workaholic. And as you guys know, I basically slogged my guts out for like God knows how many weeks uh, trying to get Hyena Boy transferred over and then Echo transferred over uh, to KPT. And that was on KPP. And that was on top of releasing a book at the beginning, a new book at the beginning of December as well. So that was that was a lot of work, um, all in a relatively short space of time, I might add. <laughs> uh, so it, it's been a case of both in terms of like my day job and in terms of my writing job. At the moment, I've just turned into this massive kind of workaholic, and it's not something I ever kind of thought would happen. I've never been like a lazy person, but certainly um, certainly when I was younger and, and definitely in my teens and in, in my early 20s, I, you know, I had a lot of, uh, I suffered from mild depression, I suffered from some anxiety issues, uh, panic attacks and, and, and that kind of thing. So my where my frame of mind was at that point in time, I, I did coast. I did coast a lot on the fact that I am naturally intelligent enough to get passable or reasonably good grades without having to try as hard as I probably should have. Um, I certainly, I don't, I don't like to live my life with regrets. 
So I don't look back on how I did for my GCSEs or how I did for my A-levels or how I did for my, my degree and kind of go, you know what, I regret not working harder because I know so well the frame of mind I was in at those times and at those ages and for everything that's going on in my life at the time and everything else going on around me at the time and everything I was feeling and I was dealing with at the time. I was not in the frame of mind that I could have been in um, in order to do any better than I actually did. And the fact that I still managed to do reasonably well um, in all those things, A, is, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to the fact that I, I am naturally intelligent enough to be able to do that. Um, but I, I also know that, you know, it, it's, uh, it's one of those things where I'm very much, I think, a little bit like Zell. This is this is the bit of me that's a bit like Zell, where I have a lot of potential. And I've always had a lot of potential to, to be really good at things, um, unless I care passionately about it. Um, I tend to just coast. Um, and certainly, when you know, when I was a teenager and in my early twenties, when I you know was going through a lot of emotional turmoil, um, it was easier to just coast. Um, but since starting work, where I, where I do work now, um, and, and all the things that have kind of happened, yes, there have been times where, you know, because of all the health stuff going on and this, that and the other, that I have just let myself coast just a little bit. But coasting is still working reasonably hard because, you know, the, the longer that I've done this job, the more I, I, I care about the job. <laughs> <laughs> Again, isn't something I thought necessarily would happen when I when I first started. Certainly, when I first started this job, I was coming off the back of a really bad working experience. Um, I won't go into too much details. I won't say who the company were um, or or anything like that because you know I don't want to be you know uh, liable or anything like that. Even though you know nothing I'm I'm saying is necessarily untrue from my perspective. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure their perspective is a whole load of whatever, but from my perspective, you know, nothing I'm about to say is untrue. Um, it, it's how I felt at the time. It's the experience that I had at the time um, in that I was being severely underpaid. Um, I wasn't being allowed to learn anything properly. Uh, basically, you know, if I if I wasn't perfect at it right away, then they'd get you know there was a little bit of stroppiness. There was this, uh, there was this nasty sort of energy. This this very claustrophobic environment that I that I was working in. Um, and when you know my 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 dad and my stepmom sort of pushed me to kind of like say, look, at the very least, can I be paid properly? Um, I did get dismissed. Um, and they, they sort of trumped up a few things against me, which weren't 100% untrue, but they weren't also the actual truth. They, they were sort of uh, exaggerated for, for their purposes. So, you know, they, they weren't gross misconduct, but they were trying to make it look like gross misconduct, even though, you know, it was just maybe a little, little bit of misdemeanor, you know, at most a, a kind of you know, a little bit of, of, of deception, but it wasn't gross misconduct in, in any sort of sense of the word. And that's what they were trying to basically say that it was. Um, and I, you know, ended up taking the tribunal and the tribunal hearing was literally two days after I started the job that I have now, uh, which, you know, wasn't uh, it was so stressful. It was really oh, not, a fun, not a fun position to be in. You're starting a new job and you're still having to deal with that from, you know, from the old job. Um, and they did, in the end, they settled, and I did get not a huge settlement from them, but I did get some money from them. Um, so I, I essentially won the case. Um, and again, nothing about what I've said is untrue to, to the situation or untrue to my perspective of the situation, whether or not they'll agree that that's what happened, but they definitely did settle with me. Um, so they were definitely willing to, you know, admit that if they had to keep pushing it any further forward, they were going to have to pay out a lot more because they were in the wrong. <laughs> um, but that, that's as, as, as detailed as I'll, I'll, sort of, I'll sort of go with that. But, you know, having that as my sort of initial work environment, 
not only put me off working for that type of company again, it also put me off doing that type of work again, even though I'm now in a position where I'm having to to do a very active job with chronic pain, um, with two compatible chronic pain conditions that make life or can make life extremely difficult for me. Um, and I, you know, on the, on the one hand, it's good that I'm still doing a very active job because actually being active with the conditions that I have is beneficial. It's it's incredibly beneficial. But there is a, there is a line. There is a line where it goes from being beneficial to being harmful because you're doing too much. And I quite often go over that line. Um, I always I always do my best to sort of pull myself back and, and reassess the situation and try to remind myself that you know I can't be doing things at 100 miles an hour anymore because my body just won't let me um, and you know because I have proven myself over the time that I've been there to be uh, dedicated to the job to be reliable to to be this that and the other and and it, it's it's kind of it's like a whole different me I think since since starting the day job that I've that I've currently got. Um, yes, there's been lots of stuff that's gone in my personal life that has not always made life particularly fun uh, for me. Yes, you know, I, I do still get bouts of mild depression. I still get bouts of, of anxiety, not necessarily anywhere near as bad as they were in my own teens, but it still, it still sort of hangs around. It still sort of lingers because I've been through a lot of stuff which does sort of you know, make those emotions come out again. Um, but in terms of where my headspace is compared to where my headspace was um, when I was younger, I'm in a better headspace in general. And a lot of that has been down to doing this job to, yes, it's it's not the most exciting job in the world. Yes, it's not, you know, the highest paying job in the world. Yes, it's not the most, you know, I mean, as I said before, I, I do work in fast food, it, you know, it's, it's not, you know, one of these, you know, you need massive amounts of intelligence, but it's also not a high stress job. Yes, it can be really stressful <laughs> when it's busy and, you know, whatever else, but it's not a high stress job. It's one of those jobs where you can leave at the end of the day and not think about it until you go back again. Um, from, you know, for most of my career there, that's what this job has been. Um, but since moving into the position that I've now got, um, I've started now thinking about the job outside of, of work and in some ways it's been really good, it's been really a really positive thing and I've never done anything because I felt I've had to do it, it's always been because I want to do it because I'm thinking about it right now, if I do it right now I'll remember to do it because my memory is the worst. <laughs> I'm getting better now at writing things down to remind myself to do them so that I can do them when I'm in work or alternatively stay that little bit extra after I've clocked out in order to finish it before I leave work so that it's done and I can get home and I can draw a line under it for the day because um, I like keeping my, my home life and my day job life not completely separated but separated in the right way in the way that I'm not coming home and feeling stressed and worried and anxious and, and all of this other stuff about it. Because I've 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 been there, I've I've done that, I've I've had that kind of oppressive atmosphere of of oh my god, my job is taking everything from me and I don't want to be in that position again. So the fact that I'm able to carp car mentalize <laughs> I can't say it, uh, uh, to, to section it off, um, I, I, even like, even when I'm in a position where I'm kind of like, I kind of want to be doing all of these things, but it's like, no, I, I, I can section this off, I can find new ways of thinking about it, I can only, you know, only if I absolutely have to, will I sort of do stuff at home, or if I feel like, you know, it, it'll be easier if I get this sorted now, um, that's the only time where I'm sort of trying to break that rule now. Um, certainly to begin with, I was like, oh my God, I'm, you know, like I was taking everything home with me. And it was just, I, I knew right, right away that I needed to sort of put a stop, a stop to that. <laughs> Not because, as I said, I didn't feel like I was, you know, had to do it. it I, there was no pressure. 
to sort of do it. It's just I was getting so caught up in everything. Um, whereas now I'm kind of like much more, okay, calm down. You know, you know, you know you've got time to do this. You can you can find the time to do this, even if it means you're doing it in your break whilst you're in work. Yes, okay, you're, you're still sort of working during your break, but you're, you're, you're sat down, you're calm, and it's, it's a completely different kind of working to, to working, or staying a little bit after your shift and getting it done then. You know, it, like that kind of thinking is coming more easily to me now, um, although it did take me a couple of months to remember that that kind of thinking exists. Um, but I think like the reason it is coming more easily to me is because I don't want to be back in in that that sort of oppressive feeling and not enjoying my day job because I love my day job. I have said this before. I absolutely love my day job. Um, I you know it's not always the, the most fun that I can have during my day. Um, you know there there are lots of things about it that that you know annoy me or get me a little bit stressed. Um, but the fact that I can just sort of leave and um, not really think about it. Um, to, you know, any more than I absolutely have to, um, means that, you know, more often than not, I have positive memories and positive associations with, with my day job. Um, and, you know, the fact that I could see myself turning, uh, I, I think I have been, I think I have for many, many years been a bit of a, of a workaholic when it comes to this job. I've not, you know, not taken time off when I've been really unwell, even though I probably should have because I might have recovered a bit faster. But then again, some of that was, well, actually, no, I might not have recovered any faster because there, there are underlying causes that weren't being treated. So it was, you know, um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, I, I think I have slowly turned into a bit of a workaholic with, with the day job. And it's trying to restore that balance a little bit and, you know, keep that there. And I think the sort of the big thing that made me realise I needed to, to do that was on the other front and all the the writerly stuff that I've been doing for the last month and a bit, getting the books ready, um, the, you know, relaunch for the, either the relaunch or for the initial launch. And the writing job is a lot. It's a lot. It's not just all like the editing and that side of things. It's also remembering to to promote it, to to be keeping an eye on on how things are going, to keep on top of everything. It's like, you know, I, I, I do um, have Goodreads uh, that I have to check regularly to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Um, and, you know, remembering to, to update like the website and the YouTube channel, which is what I'm doing now. So like the, the writer job, it's not it's not just about sitting down and writing, which is, you know, the, the, obviously I, I enjoy the most or sitting down and editing, which is another thing that I really do enjoy doing. It's about all of this other thing that goes along with it because I'm an indie author and nobody else is going to do it for me. Um, so really kind of realising just how big a job being an indie author is going to be. And, you know, when I eventually reach the point where I am able to work full time as an author, that's going to be easier because I'm not going to have to work everything around the day shift. I'm not going to be doing like long day stretches of trying to get through a, a 150 odd pages of Times New Roman 12 point pieces. <laughs> that's what I tend to write in, in order to, you know, make sure the book, uh, a book is edited quickly. Um, I'm going to, you know, I mean, I prefer taking my time with editing. I prefer enjoying the process of editing trying to do a lot of editing very quickly and this is, this is one thing I did find with, with Echo having to do three edits in the end um, was that I got very drained by the time I was doing the third edit because it's a lot like to, to basically take you know three complete days to do three complete edits it, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of stress and I couldn't do them on consecutive days because I had to do it around work so I was, you know, tired from work and, and then having to do this and it was very mentally tiring, very mentally draining. And I think at that point I kind of realised I need to make sure that I am giving myself time to rest um, and that I'm not overworking myself either for the day job, which I love, or for the writing job, which I also love. Because it's very easy, I think, when you genuinely enjoy what you do. Um, 
not to start overworking yourself and that's just going to make me that's just going to make me unwell not just because of the conditions that I have but in general if you overwork yourself it makes you unwell even if you enjoy it it's not good for you <laughs> so um I'm very much trying not to be a complete workaholic I'm very much trying to bring back a little bit of balance to remember that I, you know, I can rest, I can do this, I can do that, I can, you know, separate things out a little bit more, I don't have to get everything done really quickly, um, I mean, I, I felt a bit more pressure with the whole echo situation, because I didn't want it off the shelves for for too long, um, and likewise with a hyena boy, I didn't want it off the shelves for too long, you know, I, I had to get the turnaround as quick as possible, um, but most of the time, you know, the, the editing work doesn't take that much time getting home and, and checking this, checking that, checking the other, making sure I'm keeping on top of all the things I need to be keep taking on, keeping on top of doesn't take that long. And it doesn't take that much time on my on my days off. But it's just remembering to keep that balance and remembering that that balance is important because there's nothing wrong with being a workaholic to a point. And it's about not going above that point. It's about knowing your limitations. And that's, I think that's one of the biggest things that I've kind of learned since doing this job is that, yes, I am the kind of person who can put themselves 100% into things that they are passionate about, that they enjoy, that they care about. But then I need to make sure that I'm not putting too much more than that in because it's not good for me <laughs> and that I have to be I have to learn balance and it's yeah it, it's not the kind of things necessarily that I would look back at 21 year old me and go oh yeah 21 year old me is going to be a workaholic no um I I knew that I was the kind of person who can dedicate themselves to something that they enjoy who can be very um methodical with the things that they enjoy very this is not the word that I'm looking for um I mean I, I you know back then I was I was writing a chapter a day um or a chapter a day per project that I was writing so I knew that you know if I cared about something or enjoyed doing something that I would put the time in and I'd put the effort in um so I, I knew there was a part of me you know even then that could see the value of hard work and I've always been able to see the value of hard work but that knew the value of hard work and was able to go with that and, and, and able to sort of achieve from doing that. Um, but I think I like looking back at 20 year old, 21 year old me, I would never have seen 21 year old me being in this sort of position where they care this much about the day job because the day job was always just going to always supposed to just be a, an end to a meet because it wasn't supposed to be something that I would you know genuinely care about and genuinely want to do well at um but you know that's that's just a situation that, that I find myself in and, then, and as I've said before I really I really I so want the writing to career to, to kick off and you know to be at the end of this this year looking into next year kind of going you know what you know in, in in 18 months or so from now I can probably be you know living the dream of, of being of working full-time but but working full-time as a writer I mean um but at the same time I'm kind of like I'm, I'm in a really good place with the day job so if it does take a little bit longer then it, it does take a little bit longer but you know it's uh, it's such a tricky situation to be in because I care so much about both of these things. And I think, I think that more than anything else is what's turning me into a workaholic. It's if I care about something, if, you know, if, you know, something is important to me, I do put a lot of myself into it. And yeah, that, that tendency to be a workaholic, that tendency to, to be very overly passionate about something, that, you know, that is just a part of who I am. Um, and I need to learn to balance that. Because working one is essentially two full-time jobs. <laughs> it's going to kill me if I don't put some balance into it. Um, but, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, this one kind of went slightly different to how I recorded it the first time. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It probably just means that my thoughts have kind of 
sorted themselves out a little bit better than than they were before. Um, as you can see, the light is dying. So if, even if I wanted to record another one right this second, I'm not going to be able to because I, I don't want to, I don't want artificial lighting in in these ones. I like I like the natural lighting. I think it it works better for the location that I'm in. Um, plus I'm tired and I need to eat. <laughs> I have work again. To, I have day job again tomorrow. Um, so I hope you guys have found this one sort of interesting. Um, I hope you are looking forward to finding out whatever it is I'm contemplating talking about next time. I do have some topics in my head for things that I do want to actually talk to you guys about. Um, so yeah, look forward to that. Um, and I will see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs> If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!